Hi folks, Forrest A. Jr. here. Today on Rolling Tape, we have Richard Pepperman, author of the book, Everything I Know About Filmmaking, I Learned Watching Seven Samurai. Now, let's roll tape. This episode brought to you by Spoof Dance Film Festival. Make parody commercials and bring the funny. Richard, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Talk a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, what you teach. I uh, teach at the School of Visual Arts in the film department. Um, and I teach uh, Introduction to Final Cut, uh, which was an introduction to editing class. I I'm not sure why the introduction to software <laughs> gives, gives a title to a course. I, I once said to one of the screenwriting teachers who asked me how I like teaching digital editing, or teaching Final Cut. I said, how do you like teaching Microsoft Word? Um, and I said, it's really the same thing. I'm teaching film editing. It just turns out that tools are quite different than uh, what I grew up with. Uh, I've been working in post-production. Uh, February was my 52nd anniversary. Um, and so I think in, in large part, spending so many years working with students, and I, I bet I'm among the people on Earth who have seen more images on in in motion than almost anybody else, uh, just because of all the film students I've had over a 44-year career. Um, there's lots of learning, and I've gotten to the point where I don't think I'm so smart after all ever um, that there is still much much more to learn, uh, and I I I, I, I try to give. Uh, that philosophy and incentive, uh, a promise, an excitement to students that just when you think you now have something, uh, that things have begun to make sense, you're going to have a much broader perspective uh, than you would have ever imagined. Tell, tell us what the book is about and, and why you wrote well, it. Well, uh, uh, in 2004, I had a book published. Uh, and it was specifically about film editing, and it was called The Eye is Quicker. Um, and in the introduction to that book, I mentioned that all of the examples that I used in that book might likely be found in anyone's film. Uh, and then the publisher, Michael Weesey, some eight years or nine years later, came up with an idea to make use of uh, Seven Samurai as that one film. Uh, and so uh, the book follows the chronology of the DVD or Blu-ray of the Criterion Collection. And each of the chapters, again following that menu, uh, pauses on occasion, sometimes maybe once, uh, sometimes five or six of those pauses, with lesson learned, uh, which goes into then uh, examples of what uh, Kurosawa teaches uh, about storytelling, uh, about editing, about cinematography, uh, about directing, and that, that was basically uh, the format and structure for the book. And uh, when, when did you decide to write the book? Did you see the movie Seven Samurai a bunch of times? Uh, because it's a long movie. There's, and of course, you talk about it in the book. There's different versions have different lengths, and you discuss, um, you know, why some parts were taken out. But what made you write this book? Did you see the movie and say a book needs to be written? Or I know when I saw the, the film, it was likely 1960 or 61. Uh, the film opened in New York in '56, I believe. Uh, and was not the full 207 minute running time. The film appeared throughout the world in various running times. Uh, one of the things that struck me in seeing uh, the full length of the film, and by chance coming across a Donald Ritchie translation of Kurosawa's film from a cut running time version, was that it was, I thought, an example of uh, less is more rather than more is less uh, because in trying to uh, visualize the cuts because I could find them having uh, a DVD of the 207 minute version, 
I could identify the chapters from the menu in the Donald Ritchie 160 some odd minute version. And I thought, yes, it, it was easy enough, I guess, to make these cuts. But what really happens is there's both uh, creating an implausibility to or, or a conflict to what the audience has been led to believe or an abruption, an absolute uh, abruption in the flow of the film. Uh, I'm not sure if abruption is a word. It might actually be Japanese. Um, and uh, so let's say an abrupt altering of rhythms. Uh, and so uh, it just had a feeling that you're watching longer than if you would have been allowed to watch exactly what Kurosawa had meant to do. Um, the, the history of the book, by the way, uh, it, it shouldn't go unmentioned. Uh, the publisher's daughter at the age of 12 or nine, it might have been she saw the film at the age of nine, and then decided to do her first movie at the age of 12, uh, and mentioned to Michael Weesey, the publisher, that she was making use of everything she learned by watching Seven Samurai. And so this was maybe eight or 10 years later, Michael called me with this idea in mind. And that, that's how we got to sit down and try to figure out a way uh, to structure the book. And we, and we should talk that who's the book aimed at? I assume filmmakers who may be looking for uh, ways to tell their story. Is that correct? Yeah, it, 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 it focuses in large part on the techniques of storytelling, the the impact of storytelling. In fact, when just from watching the film, at least 50, 60, 70, I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it were not 100 times I watched the film, it allowed me to start defining story, which is not easy to do other than to offer synonyms, you know, narrative, folklore, tale, which isn't really a definition of a story. It's simply another word for story. But the book also offers that, uh, three in particular definitions of uh, how one might define a story. And what Seven Samurai matches wonderfully is there is a routine established or, a, or an implied pattern established, and then that pattern is broken or altered or threatened. Uh, and then the plot derives from what the protagonist, or in this case, the village, there is an initial protagonist, uh, Rikichi, one of the farmers in the village, uh, who then initiates this effort to find samurai to protect the village from the threat of bandits. Um, of course, there are films uh, where the pattern is only implied, not established. A great example of that is Lifeboat by Alfred Hitchcock. By the way, yeah. Tell folks where they can get the book and touch quickly upon, um, you've got another book, Illuminations, and probably several others, correct? Yeah. Uh, Seven Samurai was, was uh, published in 2014. Before that, I wrote a book called Illuminations, Memorable Movie Moments, uh, and it was a happy surprise. I got word that it had, it, it had been a, nominated as a finalist for the Best Moving Image Book Award in 2011. And it, it really, in, in, in large part, deals with uh, one or two seconds to, to several minutes uh, throughout film history of mostly motion pictures that have influenced me that have somehow uh, inscribed themselves into and onto my brain. Um, uh, it, it covers uh, uh, from 1925 till I think 2005. Uh, a whole variety of film genres and films produced and directed around the world. Uh, before that, I, I had written a book for Michael uh, called How to Watch DVDs and Learn Everything About Filmmaking, which is a different approach to teaching filmmaking than uh, breaking down uh, the disciplines as uh, screenwriting, directing, editing, cinematography, but rather it's a it's kind of a view of the collaborative process of all all of them together. Um, and then a book called Setting Up Your Themes: The Inner Working of Great Films, which is a more traditional horizontal book, which I think just presents a template. And I would hope people who read the book uh, realize they can devise their own template to try to understand and analyze films. 
And before that, uh, the eye is quicker, which is in large part about film editing, uh, what to look for, what to look out for, why scenes work. Uh, that came about basically uh, by my buying at the time VHS tapes of films I didn't like and trying to find scenes I thought were well edited. And that difference, uh, trying to understand and explain why a scene is well edited, even if it's in a film I didn't like, came about because I realized one can't teach, let alone uh, argue the point of good editing by simply saying it's good because I think it is, or it isn't because I think it is. And so I came up with, I think, and I still hold to it, uh, several elements that I think uh, do lend themselves to a very clear, however subjectivity works its way in, uh, more or less an objective view of a scene or a sequence or a whole film. All right. Thank you for all the information that you've uh, shared with us. I wish this podcast was longer so we could talk more and more because there's so many uh, paths I want to go off on. But um, I appreciate um, everything that you've uh, talked well, about can, today. As far as you can work towards a 207-minute podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think it'd be as as or as popular as Seven Samurai was. But uh, hey, we could try that, right? It'd be like the Jerry Lewis telethon uh, except <laughs> with me. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate you being on today. Well, thank you so much. That's Richard Pepperman with uh, his book Everything I Know About Filmmaking. I learned watching Seven Samurai. Please subscribe to our channel for filmmakers. Uh, you can sign up for alerts so that you know when uh, new videos get uploaded. Please like and comment below. We love to hear your comments and your thoughts on the show. So uh, feel free to do that. And thank you for watching us here on Rolling Tape.